the, the big picture in the NBA, as Daryl Moore, the GM of the Rockets, put it, it's an arms race. How much closer does this put Boston to closing the gap with the Golden State Warriors? That's a tough question because Golden State is going to be really good for at least the next three years. Okay, That's the way everybody looks at it right now. And can you play the style of play that gives you a chance to beat Golden State, or do you play a style of play that Golden State has to make an adjustment to? Can you pound them in areas that aren't the strongest spots for Golden State? Because you know you're going to have to score against them. You have to score enough points to beat what they're going to put up on the board. You have to get out and defend them in their perimeter game, in their transition game, a team that moves the basketball, which moves your defense. Do you have that type of athlete to go up against them? Without question, this trade takes Boston as was just said, to a different level. Isaiah Thomas is a great player. He's an all-star player. He scored almost 29 points per game last season. Shoots the ball almost exactly the same as Kyrie Irving does, but it's a different level player, Kyrie versus Isaiah Thomas. We haven't heard from Kyrie about this supposed trade request, right? We, we obviously know that at, at this point it, it was true, and David Griffin, the former GM, had, had talked publicly about it as well. But now the pressure's on Kyrie. Right, he's joining a really good team, a stable organization with a good foundation. But Kyrie is the clear-cut best player. Can he be the best player on the best team in basketball as per his reported wish? Well, let me just say this. First of all, Kyrie's the luckiest guy in the world <laughs> because he could have been put into two years of purgatory if someone had come up with a better deal than Boston had and if they really wanted Kyrie and believed that they could get him to stay with that franchise. He could have been playing for the next two years on a team that won 30 games, mm -hmm. 35 games. And he would have gone from all those finals in a row to saying, I want to be traded and wind up in a place where he's winning 30, 35 games. That didn't happen. No. He wound up with a team that's got a chance to go all the way to the championship series. So good for him. Uh, the request was made. Management looking at it, how to protect themselves. What they got is a chance for now, the immediate to win games, and also a little piece for the future down the road, just in case LeBron leaves. Yeah, I'm not sure how you would rank these players in today's NBA, but you think about the All-Stars that have been traded this offseason, starting with Kyrie Irving, Isaiah Thomas, Chris Paul, Jimmy Butler, Paul George, rank them however you want. There's no doubt, with that 18 Nets first round draft pick, the Cavs got more for Kyrie Irving than any other team got for their star in return. Well, that all depends on what Brooklyn winds up doing this year. I think right now many people are saying the Nets are going to be horrendous next year. They've been that way for the last three or four years. This is a different Brooklyn Nets team coming back. They've added a couple pieces here and there. They made a trade. They picked some free agents up. And under Kenny Atkinson, they played hard. Okay, and they were close in so many games that they couldn't finish in the fourth quarter. And... The Eastern Conference isn't all that powerful this year. There are a lot of teams who are starting over again, whether you want to look at Atlanta or Chicago. So maybe Brooklyn surprises a lot of people, and that first-round pick isn't quite as high as you think it might be tonight.